go from this to this. All right, let's get right into it. We're going to go from this to this. All right, so we're going to move this down. So first what we're going to do is create a new channel mixer. And we're going to select monochrome to make it black and white. And we'll just adjust the reds, the greens, and the blues in the constant channels. So let's move this slider up and down and see what we get. I think I like it around. Let's see, that's completely black, completely white. So let's try to stay around 30 or 40 or so. Let's go to the greens. Same deal, go black and overexpose it, but it's gonna be gonna do around, let's see. I think I had it, I did it at 40. Let's do 42. And for the blues, let's keep it around. Let's see how it would look like this. I like it there. 26. And for the constant, not too much, uh, but just a little bit. We'll go plus five. All right. Next, what you want to do is you want to hold down the Alt Option key. You want to click on Curves Layer. And you want to clip the masking to the previous layer. So it's going to clip this layer to the Channel Mixer layer. Check the box and hit OK. And now this layer is clipped down to the Channel Mixer. So it's only going to affect just the channel mixer, not anything else below it. So here what we want to do is we want to target four main areas. We want to target the lighter area, the darker area, or you could choose the hair, kind of in the middle area here and a little more of a gray area here. So that we have, we will affect all the layers. All right, so what we're gonna do is click on your eyedropper and let's start with the highlight. So we can either go here where the nose is or we can go around here where the cheek is, but let's do, let's do the forehead. And you just click and just drag up just a little bit. We don't need a whole lot, but just a little bit. So let's stay around there. All right, next we're going to do kind of like the gray area. So let's do uh, let's do still around here. Click, and we're gonna just drag down. Let's see about that. Okay. And I'm really liking the 150 here, so I'm gonna change this to about one, 130 or so. All right, next we're gonna do a little bit darker. So let's do, let's go around, let's go here. This area here, I like to, I like to stay around the histogram area. So let's go about here, let's click on this point here. Let's, let's 
see what we get when we do around 100. Okay, so let's do, that's good. And let's do 100 here. Do 60. That's about right, yeah, I like that. Okay, so our point here is usually around like a little bit of a more, a little more around, a little more darker area. About right about here. All right, and then this point right here is automatically going to be black. I mean, if we go here, we can go maybe to our hair or something, and it'll be completely black, but we'll keep that at zero. So you have your four points, you have your highlight, you have your somewhat grayish area, and it can look darker, and then you have your black. And then we just put this together, call this black and white, and you've gone from your color image to your black and white. And this is typically what I do for majority of my black and white images. I like doing it this way because when you do just a regular black and white layer, it's nice, but it's too soft. So for this image, it's because it's dramatic with the makeup a little bit, and you have the shadows on her neck you want it to be a little bit more dramatic so that's why I do it this way. You can get this effect with doing the same thing by doing alt in a curved layer to the black and white. But from my experience it's it's not as strong as the channel mixer. This one has a little bit more punch to it. It stands out more. It brings the highlights out a little bit more because you're affecting the RGB of the layer, of the layers. With the black and white, you're only able, if you don't have any greens or anything or yellows in the layer, then it won't affect it. So with this image, I'm only able to affect the reds and the yellows. No greens, no blues, no magentas. So that's why I typically just stick with the channel mixer and adjust the reds, the greens, and the blues in a constant. So uh, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you have any questions, you can comment on my YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. If you like this style of retouching, please check out my other videos to see more. Thanks.